Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. Welcome back guys. Operation Siren is coming at the end of the month and a lot of you guys are asking, what can I do to prepare? And the number one thing that people have asked me to provide them with how to prepare is to prepare equipments. What equipments are coming in Operation Siren? We get a ton of equipments that are coming in Operation Siren. Some of them are great, some of them are meh. And of course we are getting equipment tech trees. This means that some equipment that we already have in the game will now be able to be crafted with worse equipment. So I am here to tell you today which equipment you should save in order to level up that equipment or enhance it or use the new mechanics of the check tree to get the new OP equipment as well as get equipment that has been locked by events in the past. If you're like me, you don't buy depot space, and that means you have to retire equipment that is useless. This is usually purple and blue equipment. That equipment now can be upgraded to better equipment, and this video is all about telling you which equipments we are going to be saving for. But before we get into that, we have to show you guys what the new equipments that are coming that are exclusive to Operation Siren and are they worth getting so that we know which equipments are going to be part of the meta equipments and then we can assess what tech trees will build us up to those equipments. So here's a graphic here of a bunch of the new equipments sorted out by the different factions. Obviously this is not all the equipment that's coming. There's going to be more. We've already had leaked of a rainbow dive bomber that's not on here obviously and so not everything's on here but we'll point out some differences but this is a pretty good list once again we're breaking up by faction because in the game your tech tree is broken up by faction so to stay consistent with that we're going to keep it that way a reminder of those of you who don't know anything about these tech trees i have past videos talking a little bit more about this stuff you can go watch those but the short end of the stick is we're going to have gold prints and rainbow prints that gets us up to plus 13 we're going to have all these new resource types that come droppable such as steel and wire and vacuum tubes and silicon and all those things which will help us improve our equipment move it up this tech tree and of course we are going to have some specific upgrades that lead us into old ships so we're going to start off here with the kms because they get the least amount of love and realistically all the purple equips in the kms and all the blue equips the rare equips don't really matter there's only three equips that we have here in the kms here and so we're going to talk about those the first one is is a destroyer gun that's AP. It's the only gold destroyer gun that's AP, so it's obviously the best one. This is actually really good for destroyers that are firepower based and want to deal with medium armor stuff like uh, Azuma or things like that. This is a very good gun for those that need AP, and it's just giving versatility to destroyers in general. You will probably need to pick up one. The next one, the Twin 105, this is an AA gun. It's basically just the same as a Roomba in terms of its uh, damage. So, you know, it comes from some worse AA guns. So if you have some spare materials, you could do it, but this is low priority because there are better AA guns. I'll tell you right now, there's not a single AA gun in here that is better than the PR3 sextuple Bofors in terms of AA capacity and 10 hit stat from the Bofors stag is not going to be outclassed either. So really there's no big AA gun changes in the meta at all here. I'll just give you a heads up on that. Finally, we get the Jew or also known as the Stuka. It is a torpedo bomber, which is interesting. For those of you who are worried about Graf Zeppelin, we are getting buffs to a bunch of new ships. If you haven't seen that video, go do that. And one of the buffs will allow the Graf Zeppelin to equip torpedo bombers. This is important. Her other buff will also allow her to get bonuses by only equipping one German plane. This is the German plane you will equip. So if you are a German main, you have to use carrier now because of the new hidden carrier mechanic. And if you are using Graf Zeppelin, which is basically the only SR carrier, and I guess Zeppi doesn't really count. But my point is, if you're using the KMS, you need to be using a carrier. And if you're using the carrier, there's only Graf Zeppelin. If you're using Graf Zeppelin, this is the plane you need for her torpedo bombing slot. And then you can equip the non-German planes that are better and get the German enhancement equipped here. So for German fans, this is a must pick up. But I'll tell you right now, even though this is better than most of the torpedo bombers we have currently in the game, torpedo bombers get a big 
buff in this new session of Operation Siren. In fact, all planes get a big buff in here. Okay, we're moving on to the Japanese. We get two AA guns right off the bat. Those are, once again, not going to beat out your sextuple bofers. So it's like, you know, once again, you can upgrade worse stuff into them. That's fine. We get a torpedo launcher. That's something that the three major factions, KMS, sorry, not including you, uh, will get a torpedo launcher. This basically is going to allow you to have certain torpedo ships be more torpedo Mimi, where you can exchange your main gun for torpedo extra launches. We'll have to see how good they are, but some of those torpedo meme fleets will be using these. We then get a seaplane. This one's actually a decent seaplane, which is important because there are a huge buff to the battleship carriers because before they literally gave up a main gun shot for a seaplane, which was terrible. And now the seaplane actually matters. It's kind of always interesting that in the history, they upgraded to a seaplane. And in the game of Azure Lane until now, they were downgrading when they got that seaplane. You didn't actually want to modernize them into the seaplane. Now you do with the new hidden carrier mechanic. And that means that we need a seaplane to put on them. This one is pretty much going to be the best seaplane. Seaplanes still kind of meh. Their damage is not comparable to other planes, but it's still better. And then we get another dive bomber, which is pretty good. And then we also get a submarine torpedo here. Nothing in the other rarities really matter. We'll move over to the Royal Navy here in the HMS. We get a normal ammo gun. It's not really best in class, but it's decent. We get some other decent guns. We get two submarine torpedoes and we get, of course, the quintuple torpedo launcher. I believe this is probably going to be the best one, but uh, don't quote me on that. And then the most important one that comes out of the Royal Navy is not actually on this list, but it kind of is. It's the submarine sea fire. And that's not because that's a good fighter. It's actually because that can be upgraded into the rainbow torpedo bomber that comes out of the Royal Navy factions. So you're going to need to get those. You can actually get those by upgrading a Blackburn Firebrand. Blackburn Firebrand is getting gettable in the core data shop. And this is basically what this video is going to be, telling you which equipments you need to upgrade into the stuff that is really powerful in Operation Siren. The first one is the Blackburn Firebrand. This is something that you're going to need if you want to get that rainbow torpedo bummer. Moving on, uh, because the actually the HMS faction probably got the least amount of buffs in terms of equipments, and but it still did okay. All these equipments are pretty decent, but the U.S. faction really saw the biggest of any of the enhancements here. We got an HE and an AP gun here. We actually get the triple 406 now comes in AP. If you can see there, it's purple. And this gives you some variety in choosing the raw damage of the triple 406. However, we get an upgraded triple 406, which is an early prototype, and it's also AP. So we actually get a gold triple 406 with AP ammo. This is going to be very good. And it's not even the most exciting thing on here. We get a torpedo launcher as well, all uh, the US, the British, and the Japanese all get torpedo launchers. We get the twin 76 millimeter uh, basically the kamikaze gun, which was basically equipped during Des Moines. Nick Lasso should be very happy about Des Moines getting a little shout out here, but uh, this AA gun is pretty busted, so uh, this is probably pretty good. The B-85 Bearcat has a thousand pound bomb as a fighter, and that looks kind of decent. Then we go to the F-7F Tiger Cat. It has two 1,000 pound bombs. There is no other fighter other than the Sea Hornet that can do this, and this one basically is going to be best in slot fighter. You need to pick these up. Okay. Next up, we're going into the XBT 2D torpedo bomber. This one drops four torpedo bombs. So this is going to probably be best in slot torpedo bomber. And then we move on to the gold hell diver an upgrade on the best, most powerful dive bomber we've had. I mean, we've had all of these gold dive bombers and yet there's one single purple dive bomber wins the bout all of them because it has one 2000 pound bomb. Now we get an upgrade of that 2000 pound bomb to being a higher tier and being on the gold record. This plane is going to be amazing and it's right upgradable by the original form. This is actually kind of dwarfed by the fact we get a rainbow dive bomber in the HMS faction. We'll have to damage test to see which one's better. It might actually still be this one. I don't know. We'll have to see, but this is definitely an upgrade over what we currently have. And then finally, we have another homing torpedo submarines for the U.S. faction. The U.S. faction literally got completely buffed on the equipment here. Of course, you can equip these equipments to any faction, so it's not really a U.S. faction buff because you're going to be putting those Tiger Cats on Shinano. Like, doesn't mean that it's because you can equip them on any faction. It doesn't really buff the U.S. faction. It really is going to buff carriers because we got three brand new best in slot fighters off of this. So let's go look at a guide here that we have from another person who has put together some of by looking at the different 
sections of the fleet trees and we'll go by section again so we'll start with the kms we start with our old purple ap gun this was the only ap gun that i know of for destroyers this was going to be upgradable in the german section so if you want to get a german destroyer ap gun you're going to need this we can upgrade this next plane into the f-190 this is fine the gold aa gun can upgrade into that german aa which is technically better than its original form but it's still not going to be best in slot so it's going to be okay meh and then this is an important factor here and remember that equipments that are already out can be in the tech trees so we can get access to previously ex event exclusive stuff or also stuff that's really hard to get like for example we're gonna get a ability to get the rainbow torpedo homing torpedoes that were only from the german event you can now upgrade them from the gold standard torpedoes so keep your gold standard torpedoes because now you'll be able to get those homing rainbow torpedoes which are basically best in slot before the black auxiliary came in and made it now kind of a question based on how many times you're going to actually launch torpedoes in your match. Now it's kind of an equation, which one's best in slot. But anyway, the point is we're going to get those rainbow homing torpedoes for people who weren't in either of the events. And this also brings me back into the submarines. Submarine equipments are a pain to get. Uh, they're just such a pain to get. And most new players aren't going to be getting them and are not supposed to be focusing on them. And I don't recommend you do focus on them. But for Operation Siren, now we need six submarines instead of three. And so now getting an easier way to get the best submarine equipment here coming into this Operation Siren at least uh, obviously gets a little bit crept a little bit but the best one coming in now we can actually upgrade those purple ones getting those prints from the weekly dailies that just sounds weird because of the way it is but you guys know what I mean those dailies that are submarines that you can do two per week those take forever to be able to build enough prints for a submarine torpedo but now we can get some of the purple ones which are easier to get and now we can upgrade them using the equipment so once again we're going to be limited on the resources and those resources are going to be being able to be dropped by Operation Siren, which will be somewhat time-gated based on how much. The translation was originally stamina, so that's what I'm remembering off the top of my head, but I remember they called it something different, like a action points or or something AP. I, I don't remember what the official Yostar translation was, but I'm going to call it for stamina for now, and note that that's going to be translated a little bit differently in the actual game. Moving on to the Royal Navy, there's uh, going to be, this gun here is going to be upgradable to the Twin 128, but one once again, not best in slot, but it is better. It's decent for new players. This blue gun here can actually three-stage upgrade into a Neptune gun, which is actually a pretty good a AP gun. So this is kind of more for newer players, but definitely this is something that, I mean, I don't have a single one of these at my depot because I retire them right on the spot. So if you, if you pick up any of those, uh, you know, you don't have to throw them all away right at the spot. Then we get the uh, the AA gun that gets upgraded into the Gold Twin 134, which is the AA gun that gives firepower boosts. Previously, you could only do this through the Ditto event, which was a one-time thing. That is a great AA gun. So this is actually something that you really need to pick up. Um, of course, the next one, this Spit thing, the Spitfire can upgrade into the Sea Hornet, which right now is the best fighter in the game, hands down, unless you're trying to do some weird stuff with AA. But for the most part, this is the best fighter. Of course, it's going to get power crypt by the tiger cat or the f7f but this is still going to be a great plane and if you have any of these lying around you can always upgrade it into a sea hornet which is certainly pretty good this also other purple plane can go into a fairy albacore which is something that you can use for formidable if you have formidable you probably already have this plane so it's not that relevant but that plane is actually upgradable into a golden barracuda so newer players not necessarily having to test their luck with those gold hms boxes in order to get a gold barracuda but once again those torpedo bombers are going to be power crept with some of the new stuff that we're getting. Moving on to the IJN gear, the gear that you want to save a lot of this upgrades into stuff we've already had, but stuff that was locked or hard to get. So we want to do that. So this old gun, I have a ton of these actually laying around just because I plopped them on things randomly for ships I don't care about, but they can now be upgraded into a twin 127 Kai, which is going to be interesting. We also have an up, this gun is upgradable into a core 203. And finally, we have the purple confetti gun can actually be upgraded into a twin 410 kai and that i guess decent i don't know like 
One, a lot of these are weird, but the ones that do matter are the four planes. These four planes are the ones that are actually super important. The first one is this Mitsubishi here, which is a rare plane. I retire these all the time. These can go up into the Shidenkai. This was the plane that got nerfed because it was too powerful, um, and, but it is still the best aviation to aviation damage plane. Of course, if you're going for aviation uh, against aviation damage with your opponent, you're probably going to play the Pirate Squad because of that boost to AA and AA's ability ability to decrease the surface damage of opposing planes actually is more important in a ship game. But if for some reason your primary goal is to shoot down planes instead of decrease the damage from the planes, the Shidenkai is technically best in slot for that. Very niche, but now we can get it. That grind for it was brutal. I literally grinded for one and I said, I am done. It's a great plane for shooting down other planes and stuff like that. And, and it could be potentially good in the future. So definitely if you have some of these, you want to pick those up, especially if you don't have enough core data to go pick up a pirate squad. Moving on, we have this uh, zero that goes up to the Repu. The Repu used to be a best in slot PVP fighter. Once again, it's getting power crept with a bunch of the new stuff here. But one of the things it does hold is its ability to fly very quickly. It it launches quickly, it flies quickly, it has two 500 pound bombs, so it has that surface damage that was base at the time of arrival. And it has this fun little mechanic because it flies so fast, can actually trigger your opponent's AA in PVP so that it's reloading at the time where those torpedo bombers who have a higher base crash damage are coming to actually go through unopposed. It's a very niche timing issue that's kind of fun to abuse, but for the most part, the Repu is a relic of the past. It's been power crept a little bit. Once again, you can always get this one from the war archives, but this is a little bit easier because you're going to have a lot of these worthless zeros lying around. Moving on, we have the Ryusei. This is also upgradable now. This one wasn't too hard to get, honestly. I feel like Ryuseis aren't too bad, but it's been, new players will definitely appreciate this, make it easier to get a Ryusei. This is a plane that is a must-have for certain specific ships. Formidable is probably one. I like mine a lot on Shinano, and there are some people that will die on the hill that this is a must-have plane for PvP. It's a very good plane for if you want torpedoes that will converge from your torpedo bombers. And finally, the last one that actually is upgradable into a plane that isn't already in the game is the Comet. This one was not a very good plane, honestly, at all, but now it can be converted to a seaplane. I honestly don't think you're going to need more than one. So this is just kind of, you're going to need at least one Comet to upgrade. Moving on to the US, this is probably the one that you guys care the most about, but uh, this new purple gun, we can upgrade it into some of the PR uh, light cruiser guns. So that's pretty nice. We also have a new purple gun that will upgrade into one of the best best AP guns in the game. And then we have the purple torpedoes, which will then allow you to go and upgrade them into a gold torpedo, which can be upgraded into a bunch of different things in succession. These torpedoes will be able to basically get you to most of the torpedo tech tree that's important, so you should keep them. Of course, we have the gold torpedoes, which come from that, and these not only can be upgraded into the slot that allows the, the MK9, which allows for more torpedo memes, but they can also be upgraded into the rainbow homing torpedoes, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we have this AA gun, which can be upgraded two stages up to a, a decent Bofors AA gun. So that's something they want to do. And then the most important one is getting your Tiger Cat. How do you get a Tiger Cat? Well, you need a gold Hellcat. Now the gold Hellcat can be gotten from the purple one, but the gold Hellcat in ideally is what you need to get. So open those gold US boxes if you have any laying around. I think I have a few hundred laying around. I'm going to be opening them all the time because I'm going to be trying and getting those Tiger Cats as quickly as possible. The Helldiver here is upgradable into the gold Hell diver. I don't think many people are retiring this plane because it's best in slot right now. So if you know anything about planes, you probably haven't retired it. But if you're new and you're just watching this video, this is the plane you need to save for best in slot now. And it will also be upgradable into a gold version in the coming update that's coming very soon. If you want the best torpedo bomber coming out, it's also going to be in the US and you need to upgrade the Sky Pirate from your BTD dive bomber. So ironically, this dive bomber was the best gold dive bomber and it kind of got shafted by the purple dive bomber because it had a smaller bomb set, which is kind of ironic, but now it will upgrade itself to being the best torpedo bomber. So don't worry if you had any of them laying around. I have a couple because there are certain situations where this one is better than the hell diver, very niche situations. So I had a couple laying around lucky for me, but if you have a couple of these laying around, you're going to want to upgrade them into the torpedo bomber that is best in slot. Of course, we're going to end it off with this last one is just a submarine torpedo and it can be upgraded from purple to gold, which is nice. So anyway, here is all the gear that you want to 
to be on the lookout for if you want to level it up. And the only one that's not on here that I would add on here now that we have some more information is you need to go pick yourself up a Blackburn Firebrand from the core data shop because you'll need one of these to go into that rainbow dive bomber. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. This was kind of a last minute thing that I just put together because I've had a lot of people being like, what equipment should I use? What equipment should I use? And I'm like, all right, well, these are going to be the equipments you should use. And once again, these are the equipments that you should use that will get you into them through the tech tree. So hopefully that will help you prepare. I know it's a little bit late. You only got like uh, less than two weeks, o only probably a week left until we uh, get this new update. And so that should be pretty interesting. Um, I'm really excited. It does also mean we're going to have a lot to do. We'll see. I hope these drop rates on the new materials are pretty bold. I know in the beta server, they were decent, but hopefully they are good. Take care guys. And I will probably be streaming more for Bunker Hill because I want to get her before Operation Siren.